Hello and welcome to Ezra Australia's video tutorial on how to use the Find Nearest Analysis tool in order to create a flow line map. A flow map or a flow line map is a type of thematic map used to show the movement of objects or phenomena between different areas. These types of maps may show things like the movement of trade goods or migration patterns. Line symbology and width are used to distinguish between classes of data and you can see those different width sizes and color symbologies evident in the map displayed on the screen right now. In this tutorial, we will be mapping migration data to Australia. The first and most important part with creating any map is to first uh, locate your data set. In this case today, we already have a data set ready to go. This data set is quite simple. It shows the top 10 countries that contribute the most to uh, migration to Australia. We can see that United Kingdom um, leads that list and Sri Lanka is 10th highest on that list. Now we could have extended that out to include other countries but we just want to work with a really simple data set so that the process is a little bit quicker today. If you were following along at home and you wanted to access this data set you can access it via our professional development website which looks like this. If you scroll down it'll be under the performing analysis in ArcGIS online section um, and it'll have a heading flow line maps. So it'll be clearly labeled for you to access too. But right now, we don't have to go through that cleaning process today. We've already saved it as a CSV file and it's on our computer, ready to go. So let's head over to ArcGIS Online. So once you've logged into ArcGIS Online, we're gonna head over to content. We're gonna add our data sets via the content window rather than the mapping window because the content window can handle larger data sets. So when your content window loads, you just need to choose a folder that you wanna save uh, your new feature layer in. I'm happy with training resources. Then I'm gonna click on add item and select from your computer. I can browse for the file. I'm just gonna drag it in from my second screen. And we just need to add some details about this spreadsheet. So I'm gonna change the title to uh, Flow line mapping data, leave it at that. And I'm gonna add a tag training because this is for training purposes. I'm gonna leave publish this file as a hosted layer ticked. And we need to work out how we wanna locate our features by. Now, if we look at our spreadsheet, we can see that our location based data is in the form of country names. So, Locating features by coordinates would be inappropriate or unsuitable. We're going to leave it as addresses or places, but we need to change it from Australia because that data is sitting outside of Australia to world as we're dealing with multiple countries here. We can see that that's been changed. We're going to leave this field as is, and then we just need to tell ArcGIS Online where it's getting that location based data from in our spreadsheet. So we know our locations, our country names are sitting in the country of origin attribute. So we're going to click on not used. And we're going to change that to country. We're just going to click outside the box to lock that in. And we're going to add item. Now, depending on the size of your data set, if you were dealing with uh, 60, 70 countries uh, worth of data um, and multiple years worth of data, then this process might take a little bit longer, but because our data set is so small today with only 10 countries, you can see it's already uh, uploaded and opened the overview page for the item. And all I wanna do from this uh, screen is I can either click on the thumbnail or click on open in map viewer. We're gonna open this data in a map. Now your data might take a moment or two to display on the map and you can see that ArcGIS Online immediately begins to try working with your data to display it in uh, what it thinks is an appropriate way. I'm just gonna cancel out of this for a second and you can see that that data set is simply being displayed as location-based data only. So I can see I've got United Kingdom, South Africa, New Zealand, um, and so forth throughout my map. Now, I'd like to spend some time symbolizing and my data set. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over my data set here. Sometimes you might need to click on it to make uh, these extra buttons appear. And I'm going to click on the change style icon or the change style button. And I'm going to change the attribute being shown at the moment. So at the moment we're only seeing location only. 
I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to change that to number of migrants. And we can see that we have a bit of a proportional circles theme going, which I really like. I'm going to click on options from counts and amounts size to make some further changes to that. So I can change the size of my smallest circle in the legend and my largest circle in the legend if I wanted to make them a little bit clearer. Um, I'm happy with them at the moment, but I am going to classify my data. By classifying my data, I can choose how my data is uh, separated, how my classes are separated. I'm going to leave it as natural breaks, but I'm going to add a fifth class. So I have five uh, proportional circles. And once I've done that, I'm also going to then click on legend. And I'm going to go with a bit of a color theme here. So in my largest circle, I'm going to start with a nice uh, deep purple today. And I'm just going to gradually get lighter in that color theme throughout and we can see that those two colors are fairly similar so I might just change that one a little bit make it a bit, a bit more distinct um, purple yep that looks good and might have to go with a pink to round it off as well when I'm happy with my colors hitting okay I'm hitting done and then I want to hover over it one more time and I want to just click on the three dots, the more options button and rename this to reflect what my data is actually currently showing. Number of migrants to Australia. And I'm hitting OK. And once I've made that um, first change to my data set, the very next thing I want to do is I want to save and save as my map. So flow line map migration to Australia and I'm adding a tag again for training and I'm saving it in a folder of my choice. You can add a summary if you wish and then you're going to click on save map. Now our next step is to create a data point, a single data point for the center of Australia and that data point will act as a, a, a location that these proportional circles can create flow lines to and connect to. So in order to do that we're going to go up to add we're going to click on add map notes and rename it to Australia and select create. And we want to choose one of the point um, data pins. I'm going to go with stick pin and put it roughly in the center of Australia. I'm going to again rename it to Australia and I'm not a big fan of the green pin so I'm going to change symbol and on the basic I can change that to red. I can also make it a little bit larger if I wanted to. Hit OK. And hit close and you can see I've got that nice pin for Australia. Now that we have our two main data sets, one is simply the Australia pin, the other is our migration dial, we're ready to create the flow lines. So we're going to head up to analysis and there's about 30 tools, 30 analysis tools in here. We want to head to use proximity and click find nearest. We want to leave step one, specify the starting location as Australia, which is our single point. We want to make sure that's essentially mapping to the number of mig migrants to Australia data, which is this other layer that we created earlier. I'm happy with line distance being the, the unit of measurement, but depending on your data set, you might find that there's a better, um, a better measurement tool for you. So I'm going to select line distance. And for step four, I want, I'm actually going to uncheck both of these boxes. I don't want to limit the number of nearest locations to one. I want lines to be created for all of my data sets. And I also don't want to limit the search range to 100 kilometers because as we can see, the distance between our pin and the closest country, whether that's Sri Lanka or New Zealand, is, is well beyond that 100 kilometers mark. So I'm going to uncheck that box too. I'm going to rename my result layer name. So it's going to create a new layer for us. Um, flow line lines and points. And we can always rename this later if we're not happy with it. I'm happy to continue saving this in my training resources folder. And I'm going to uncheck current map extent. And that's really important. And then you're going to click run analysis. And depending on the size of your data set, might depend on how long this analysis process takes. Because ours is only uh, essentially 10 lines that will be created, this, this analysis process won't take overly long. However, if you're working with a really large data set, it might take five or six minutes. Um, 
but really all you're doing is waiting until this process has been completed. Now, once the analysis has been complete, you'll notice that two extra layers appear on your uh, contents. Now, if I turn these two layers off, we can see that my two original data sets, my number of migrants to Australia and my Australia point itself. If I turn the first one on, we can see that it's simply created a flow lines and points data set, which are the, the points on the map. And I'm not too interested in that, so I'm just actually gonna turn that off for now. But I'm gonna turn the second one on and we can see that it's got the words we're looking for, connecting lines in there. And if I put those collect connecting lines on, I can see that our data is beginning to look like a flow line map. However, we need to make additional changes to this. And that, that's in the form of the symbology. So again, we're hovering over this layer and we're going to the change style icon. And we can see that they're just showing location only. And we want to swap that. Well, there's a, quite a lot of layers now. But we want to find the one that says creating a flow line map data set number of migrants, which is the same data that's being shown in these proportional circles. And we can see that ArcGIS Online immediately begins to uh, symbolize those lines according to width, depending on their uh, value, their data value. I'm going to click on council amount size options again because I want to make a couple of changes to these lines. Now the first thing is that if you were if you classified your data earlier and you made changes to how your classes were separated and how many classes you had, you really want that to be consistent with your proportional circles. Um, you want the same value of this line to match up with the with the value in this circle. And that's something really important if, if students are creating their maps, you know, that, that comes into a conversation about making sure they're creating a sophisticated um, and accurate map too. I am going to make some changes this time, however, to my size, my line sizes. We can see that uh, this line here, it, it's, it's really just too small at the end of the day. So I'm going to bump that up to five. And this line here is really, it's, it's, maybe perhaps a little bit too dominating. So I'm going to actually take that down to 15 and just slim it up a bit. And you can experiment with this. You can go back in and keep making changes. I might even go with 13 for now. And I want to also make these lines color thematic too, to go with the consistency of my map. So again, I'm clicking on each of these line symbols. I'm working my way through and you'll see that there's a slight disparity in color, but that's because um, our circles are slightly transparent. We might go back in a second and, and change that transparency to rectify that. But I'm just going to work through my layers and I'm working from memory here. So hopefully I get it right. And our last one was pink, I believe. I'm going to hit OK there. I'm going to hit OK to lock those changes in and done. And if I wanted to make these circles or, or lose the transparency in those circles, I just again, I hover over, select the more options button and where it says transparency, I can drag it in and make those changes. So you can see I've actually probably got some of these colors wrong. So if I got those colors wrong, that's all right. I can go back in, click on options, and what ones seem to be wrong. The deepest color needs to go a little bit darker. You can see that's consistent and my next color needs to go darker. And we can see that those changes are now a lot more accurate and pleasing to the eye. Now we're gonna hit save just to make sure that we've saved that process. We've updated our map so that if we lost internet connection, we're, we're still good. And we're gonna head over to legend. And we can see that my, my two data sets match so that my, this is a good way to check for um, consistency in how you've classified your classes, how you've separated them. You can see that my symbology for the largest line, 721,000 to 980,000 is matching what my proportional circles are also showing. So we see that data comes through really nicely and you've essentially created a flow line map. And that's all there is to it. I hope that you found this, this resource useful. You can check out other professional development resources on Esri Australia's Education Professional Development website. Thank you.